Uh, I start, started work on 3D Ising model a long time ago, at the end of 1970s. And, uh, but uh, of course, there were that time after Palaco, people thinking it's attractive model in two sense. First, it is a candidate to be sold, like two dimensionalizing model sold by Jan Zagerb. And 100 years of the solution creating uh, different aspects, and uh, it still will continue. And the second point was it is uh, in a gauge version. The Michele Kazel explained uh, why the Ising model is dual to gauge Ising model. Uh, and that's the, become the first candidate, simplest candidate of gauge theory with simplest Z2 gauge group. And if would, one would like to understand how that time was in the 70s and the 80s, that was popular to this consider, to construct string theory away from criti critical dimensions, 26 or 10 for supersymmetries. And that Ising model could provide some insight how to do that. That was the original idea of um, Palakov. <coughs> Then, so or, my intention is to understand strings away from critical 26 10 dimensions called non critical. That's a word non critical means that. So my plan is the following uh, to present, following Palakov, to present 3D Ising model as a string theory and formal, uh, that shows what there is a sign factor problem there. It's analog of in also the same thing that is in 2D Ising model and Scott's word factor, which, which is the origin of presence of fermion excitations there. And then formulate some network model for this sign factor in order to convert it into the, to give its string formulation. And somehow this closes topological meaning of this factor. Uh, then, I will jump to some <laughs> another problem which, which looks very far from the Ising model. It's a plateau transition in quantum hole effect. But it's it appears it's not really very far because the model which is under discussion to describe these plateau transitions appears to be the same model which I, I will show you as for sign factor in 3D Ising model. Besides, group SU2 should be changed to U1. And then it will explain plateau transition quantum Hull effect. And some kind of, indeed, two dimensional gravity will appear there, demonstrating that string theory, non critical string theories, are working also there. I will show that some calculations, numerical analysis of this model produce experimental value measured in the quantum hole effect, integer quantum hole effect. And then I will show the, all this uh, Ising model sign factor give insight how one can formulate <coughs> uh, any models on fluctuating surfaces. That's crucial for non-critical strings, how to formulate, uh, what means non-critical string theory? According to Palakov, you have uh, quantization of strings means summation over uh, word sheets over two dice surfaces. Like Feynman introduced quantization as summation of tra tra trajectories of particles. Then for strings, you have uh, their trajectories, there are word sheets. And trivial one, if there's one string, no degrees of freedom reside. But if you would like to put something over there and consider uh, the evolution of this type of object, then we should to, to know how to do that. In principle, in principle, one can put, <coughs> I will show that I will formulate some matrix model which allows you to put any spin chain model with some kind of R matrix onto fluctuating surface. And some results about this matrix model. This will allow to, so, uh, to cross so-called C equal to barrier in non-critical string theory because up to now only minimal models were able 
uh, people manage to put only minimal models where which has central charge less than one to put into fluctuating surface and construct corresponding theory. And there is no technically, there is no way uh, how to do that. If you, for example, would like to put Heisenberg model with higher spins onto the surface, how to do that? Besides the learning, but technically. Okay, so this is my plan. And I will uh, just remind the basic things coming from uh, Wegner and Palakov. Wegner formulated the Eisen gauge version of Eisen model and it analyzes duality property. And then Palakov came. Brands, not Paul. Oh, sorry, Wegner, yes, F. It's, it's just, uh, it's. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. F. Franz Wegner, yes. Uh, and Palakov was formulated as, it's as a string theory in the very simple way. If you will start, oh, my God, sorry. No. Where am I going? Ah, here. Okay. Uh, Yeah, this is the action uh, of gauge version of Ising model, the pro product of four spins residing on the links of the plackets. And then if you will simply take sum over all plus minus spins, you immediately will, uh, you will see that this sum becoming as a sum over closed surfaces from this type of distribution, from this type of action, tangent G array of the corresponding surface. And, but uh, there will be surfaces of this type. Uh, you see, so two cubics uh, have a common link. Uh, in in such, a, such a way, it's not a surface because you cannot represent it as a parameterized from two psi one, psi two parameters. It's a, but why in quantization or trajectories, we need to have integral over uh, functions of x depending from psi one, psi two. The problem is that under the self-intersection line, you don't have a uh, parameterization quad. You can't do it in three ways, uh, like this, like this, and like this. If you art artificially will simply write some of our uh, parameterized surfaces here, you will have overcounting. And to avoid this overcounting, uh, people are putting sign plus, plus, and minus for self-intersection. And then... What do you mean by this, this, and this? What exactly did this three picture? This three picture, this is a self-intersecting. This, this is arrows. They are crossing each other. Others two are not. And then with this sign, you can rewrite this sum as a sum over parameterized surfaces, x, xi. But you should put this sign factor in as argument there. This the same precisely the same situation was uh, in all this Davichenko solution of two-dimensional Ising model, where you should uh, put uh, sine plus minus uh, depending on the self-intersecting curves that time, and that's Cutsworth factor. Yeah, Van der Werden. Van der Werden. Okay. <laughs> so, also Davichenko. Yeah. Van der Werden. Well. well, well, well. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, mm, uh, then this plus minus uh, saying that self-intersection should be avoided is nothing but Pauli principle. That's why uh, fermions appearing because you should avoid two particles at the same worsen point. So in, in the language of strings, it's a kind of a analog of Pauli principle for strings. So there was activity I not, will not address here in my talk concerning uh, with the following. The old days there were, in the beginning of 80s or end of 70s, there were some activity concerning uh, putting curves, some spion, spin degrees of freedom fermions there, and analyzing the evaluation of uh, these object strings with fermions on it. There were Datsenko with Palakov, also 
Whitney, Kasha, Whitney, uh, and uh, Forster. I myself also have some written work on that. But I will not uh, uh, now analyze this type of line, this line of reaction uh, in investigation. I will simply try to understand what, what to do with this uh, science factor and why it was generated idea about how to work uh, in the plateau transition quantum hole effect. So, so can I ask a question? <coughs> yeah, please. Sir. There's a claim on this previous slide that these three quantities are equal. <coughs> the first line, the top line there, and the last line are equal. This one? Yeah. The, from here to here, it's a direct conclusion. If you will, extend, this uh, represent as a cosine plus sine of this object. And then you immediately think the cosine will not contain any spins because it's only squares disappearing there. And here in sine, you will have all linear terms only. I was talking about the last line. This one? Wait, is that supposed to somehow represent the same z? z? Same z? z? I mean, you have one equality on this The line. surface itself should define what sign it has there. It should be equality, of course. Okay, and is it equal at the bottom as well? Also, of course. <laughs> ah, sorry. <laughs> yes, it's uh, okay. Yes, well, all are equal. The question is how to define this psi in order to they become equal. Uh, Okay, what was the original, as far as I know, Palakov idea, uh, how to write this sign? Uh, if you will write minus one for the self-intersecting lines, minus one in the power of L, the length of self-intersection, -inter self is good enough to, uh, to avoid overcounting. And that one, one can uh, achieve, for example, in the following way. You have, a, as an example, you have a for example, this surface with two self-intersection lines, the length is two here. You cut it, cut it uh, by planes, each region. Here you see the plane and then cutting line, dotted line is cut it line. And then problem is reducing to two, two D curves. And uh, there the, the, the sign is known, it's like Cutsworth fake factor. And then uh, you, you have uh, that some Majorana formula like in, uh, 2D Ising model will be responsible for this uh, sign factor. And uh, because you have uh, three type of planes you can cut in 3D, the this way, in the horizontal way, in the other way, and introducing for each plane some kind of Majorana fermions in common three Majorana fields, you can more or less, uh, you can imagine that you can write the action which will produce correct sign factor. And that was the idea of Palakov, and he, he hypothesized that uh, this type of setup, these degrees of freedom appear in super strings. Yes. What do you mean by d equals 3, 2d fermions? This fermion should be in two dimensional, like uh, the fermions, I will come to that. Fermions can be two dimensional or three dimensional. Be, they, they have uh, the same amount of freedom. They are both, they are both <laughs> three and two dimensional, apparently. No, this, uh, each of plane, in a plane you have two dimensional fermion. Mm -hmm. okay. Which means, well, Majorana fermion in the Ising model, it's a two dimensional fermion. Uh, but the problem is, I just I will show that sign factor which I will define is residing on three dimensional fermion. Again, in three dimensions, the degrees of freedom of fermions in 3D or 2D is the same. They are both two-component objects, but they, they, they transform, in, transform in a different way. <laughs> the symmetry is different. So, uh, and then Palakov hypothesized that uh, the probably the continuum limit of this 3 d ising model is a Neville-Schwarz superstring in 3D. Uh, well, that, that's the, that was the point, and then uh, probably we could get answer whether it's, we'll give a, it's a good hypothesis and give a correct description if one could be able to calculate the critical indexes there. 
But since in 3D central charge of this of theory is larger than one, and then all, all theory which will develop by Palakov and other people, and some also Kazakov, Migdal, uh, Brizan, and also many his group, uh, the eventually it comes a situation when the theory, uh, this, this, all this can be done when the central charge of matter fields which you are putting on the surfaces are less than one. And therefore, in 3D, you cannot put it, and, it's, and people were unable to calculate anything. Therefore, this hypothesis to check is a question. Uh, but there is a, I would like to show that there is an alternative way to do that. Yes. Uh, which is the following uh, You have surface, of course, let's denote, let's make a. Uh, this picture on each plaquette of the 3D surface, like connect the middle points of links like this or this. Then you will have surface covered by set of uh, curves, like for example here you see, these two different ways of covering. This is one, one with the red stuff, and then you, if you reorganize in this plaquette, for example, passing from this type of covering from other type, we'll come to this point, this is another set of, another set of curves. Now let's, on each curve, define the following object. So, so we have a number of curves covering that. Uh, oh, type, amount of coverings is 2 in power of A, of course, because on each bucket you have two ways. Uh, then uh, in, on each curve you can imagine three basic vectors. Here, here, you see, one is tangent, E1, and E2 is a tangent to surface, but normal to curve. And the third one is normal to the surface. And then you can imagine uh, rotation uh, in fundamental uh, representation of these basic vectors that define E matrix as a, these vectors multiplied by Pauli matrices. And then you can imagine rotation from uh, basic vectors at the point E to the basic vectors at the point M. Uh, e plus one should be here. Uh, e plus 1 here. Uh, M is denoting one of these three uh, basic vectors. This is a formula for this type of uh, transform rotation. When for each curve, if you will take the product of this H, G, G plus 1 along a curve and take trace afterwards, here should be trace, sorry. And then you will get some factor, which is plus and minus 1. Uh, for this particular curve. The point is because when you're going around and coming back, the tangent vectors are the same. But you, everything is written in spinner representation if, and uh, SU, representation as SU2. Therefore, there, you can come to the same vectors with plus sign or minus sign, the Z, SU2 as a center Z2. Therefore, you, you, uh, you, will ha you will have a plus or minus sign. And the point is, if this curve is going around self-intersection point, like here. Mm -hmm. If you are going around self-intersection point, it will produce minus one. Oh. To see, uh, it is very easy. You can't even make an experiment. <laughs> uh, uh, just take a strip around, the, around, instead of curve, take a strip with some sm sm small, uh, uh, bytes. And then you will see that uh, going around to this point, you're coming back with turning twice uh, around his compound and coming to turn twice. And the object which I did write, wrote there, uh, this product of S matrices, which, in, it, which can be denoted as, a, by the way, as this such a way, trace exponent integral from s minus 1 ds. Uh, and then you will have a minus sign each time when there is a singularity in, in the middle. So having phi s, phi c for each curve and taking product of all these phi factors, you will get a sign, some factor for each, for all the surface. You, you have covered all surface by set of curves. And then you have this factor corresponding to the surface. 
And it, it's easy to see what I'm telling that if, say, you can introduce now fermionic structure on the surface, on, in 2D surface as a worksheet, or in 3D, both are the same. Uh, you can, this regular lines, they are biparted. You can divide sides, they're not plus and minus sign there. And uh, each, in a way that plus has only minus sign neighbor, neighbors are only minus. And then uh, you can see that uh, these factors, the curves which you have, only counts either uh, plus points going around plus points or the, the contours going around minus point where there, there are self, there is a singular point. Uh, and that's the sign factor, nothing but um, minus one in counting how many singular points can associate it with plus or minus fermions. I will now associate this with plus minus fermions, left and right fermions, and that will count their uh, behavior. Uh, so, uh, the singularity appears when you're mapping 2D any manifolds into 3D space. And then it was this type of mapping, so there was a question whether any surface can be embedded in 3D or it can be immersed in 3D. And uh, uh, the Whitney this found that when you're mapping 2D into 3D, they can be, uh, when you have a self-intersection with the end point, this, this end point is singular. I will say in what sense. And these singular points are stable if you track try to deform now the surface, you will not avoid the singularity with small deformations. Therefore, if you imagine now some, uh, we, are, we are going to sum up over all surfaces. Uh, the, the surfaces which have self-intersection line, uh, they will have a, some real measure in the set in the all distribution because by small deformation, you cannot avoid it. So it's a, some real region there, and then they have, a, they, they have a, they, their contribution. So fermionic string is quite different from bosonic string in that sense, due to these Whitney singularities in 3D. Uh, therefore, uh, as such, uh, I, my belief is that 3D Ising model is a really fermionic string. It's not a bosonic one. Uh, so, other way to see that indeed at this, if your curve is going around the singular point, if you will take, you see in the previous picture, this, ex, this formula that for phi c, you see it's a, you are taking, uh, Wilson look for, for the gauge group of S, pure gauge field, S minus one ds. Uh, and if there is a, in the, inside the contour singularity, this, this should be always one because it's a pure gauge and then you, by Stokes theorem, you will get it's equal to one. This it will be n minus one only in the case when this field is singular at some point, which is precisely this Whitney singular point. And then indeed you can calculate if you will find it's a delta function over there. So these points are preventing, there are abstractions uh, to to make immersion of, if you mathematically put the question how immerse, immersion means you can uh, put into this some way, but you allow self-intersection, but everything should be uh, regular. So uh, the, if you send out the abstraction of, for immersion of the two surfaces M into the 3D space, then Mathematics is telling us that it's well classified by second cohomological group from M with the coefficients and pi 1 SO3. So these phi's should belong to, if they belong to non-trivial cohomological class, then they are, they are uh, minus 1 or plus 1, depends on, on that fact. So that's a kind of topological class classification of this. This last line, what is C and what is M again? Phi C is a C, product, C, 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 itself, what is C? 
it's formal notation. This is maybe not good. Just a second. This is definition. Product of my good. Here it is. I, I thought this so not good. Okay, phi C is a cover. It should not be C. What is C itself? C. So here phi C is a curve. 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 Phi C K is a curve. K. But there the notion is not good. Well, good because in my article it's written this phi C is equal to this product. I mean, there, phi C means I, this product. You have a cover of all surface. So it's not my question. I'm asking what is C itself means on the last slide. Nothing. It's, it's a mistake. Oh, good, great. So, <laughs> but it is uh, to explain what is miswrite, bad writing things. Uh, f this phi there is this product. This is pretty clear. You cover surface by set of curves. And then the product, so it's, it's not a related to one curve, it's relating to all surface. The question is what was like that, right? Because you were saying it's a two-dimensional object, H2, but what is then curve C? What should have been written? Nothing. Phi from surf, like here, this one. C is collection of the curves. Phi from, X, from surface, X. Surface at all, all together. Yeah, parameterized surface. Okay, now the question is Is it possible to this, what I have described, this plus or minus, to write as an action from with some fields like fermionic fields? And then you, whether you can formulate it as uh, this phi, where is right here? Whether you can formulate this phi x psi as an integral over, in my case, I represent as an integral over fermions with some action. If it would be possible, then I will include this action, this phi, into the uh, as a factor, and then if the theory as uh, theory of surfaces will be formulated. So now I'm going to define whether it's possible how to define this type of action with some fermions, which which were integrating over this fermionic field, you will reproduce the correct sine factor. For that, let's now uh, to make take a middle point. Uh, set their right and left fermions and make arrows. Let's say from right, the arrows is getting out and from uh, left is uh, this type, okay. From uh, opposite sides, the arrows are going out and coming into ne next uh, middle points. And then in the neighbor plaquette, you will continue. Let's continue. Ar arrows it entered into this point, then from there in neighbor public plaque they exiting. And the same is here, you see? If you will cover all surface according to this prescription, you will have, for example, this type of covering. You will have the situation when which is called uh, uh, random Manhattan lattice, this uh, red covering, it's a kind of one called random Manhattan lattice. Manhattan lattice was defined by Castellane long ago. It is when you consider regular lattice and put arrows on the links by some reason. But in a way that if in one line you put arrows on the, this way, the neighbor line you put opposite direction way. And that, then, then vice versa, and continued like that. So it reminds the driving rules in Manhattan, therefore it's called Manhattan lattice. What is pictured here, you see, this is randomization. This is flat case. This is a randomization of the same side. According to this prescription, if you will put, you will get this red lattice. It's easy to see that any neighbor lines, neighbor lattice directions, they have opposite 
are rows, like because you initially you put every way opposite are rows on the neighbor lines here, these two or these two. And therefore, everywhere you have opposite directions, and then they are not crossing nowhere, by the way. And then you will have a set of uh, some kind of lattice which is not plain, it's a curved lattice. And then you have uh, on that lattice arrows which will show direction of hoping for electrons. So I put in L points. Uh, the normal on each bracket is defined well. And I, I can put in uh, left and right fermions according to this prescription. They are, uh, say, plus, minus, left and right. And then you will put the, there and writing this type of what's written here, you see. Omega is a, this rotation matrix which I described. When do you consider this point, so do you, do you have a two, uh, do you have fixed at this point three basic vectors. One, two, and normal. And when you're going to this point, you have there another three basic vectors in a neighbor placket. It's a flat picture, but you can imagine it's a curve. It's a real picture from there. So the, 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 the basic vectors here and here, they are different. So you, do you have a gauge field from rotating from this basic vector to another one? This is omega. And you put here, you can put kind of uh, uh, vectors, which tangent, two tangent vectors defined by R. With defining, I, well, to be honest, I should write it all with unit lengths, everything like that. But uh, one can imagine you can introduce here arbitrary coordinates arbitrary psi coordinates, and then introducing some kind of zwei bands here to normalize the all vectors. And then uh, you have here uh, gamma matrices in front of that, defined in this way. And you put, put all the structure in between the fermions, and then this is the action. Uh, gamma is defined like a tangent vector multiplied by, it's a three-dimensional vector. It's a tangent to surface, but it's itself it's a three-dimensional vector. And then it will multiply by three Pauli matrices. Easy to see that they, uh, they will fulfill this property. If you will take anti-commutator of these two, you will get GAB, which is the induced metric. Induced metric, uh, OK, let's, I have written the next page. Induced metric is that. G alpha beta is equal the alpha x, d beta x. And then this, if you will take now integral from this fermions in the exponent, you will, easy to calculate this integral, uh, according to things that the, there's the links are such that our rows are going in only one direction. You will, coming to this point, you, sh you have to only continue from there. And in each point, you will put two fermions in order to integral not to be zero. Uh, this is our integral of Grassmann variables. Uh, during this conference, somebody explained what is that. Uh, this is a property that if you're integrating over Grassmann variables, deep C is equal to zero, integral Psi deep C equal to one. That's a strange type of integration. If you use these rules and calculate that integral, you will exactly reproduce phi c, phi x or phi c, because you will cover in both ways all the trajectories. You, on, in, on each of those, you will have a product of these omegas. And by definition, you come to that uh, the, the definition of previous pages. So statement is that if you will consider now that type of action, this area term plus this fermionic action, this is something which describes 3 dizing model partition function. So what is special about this connection to which the fermions are coupled? So the, these are rows. These are rows. No, but OK, but if you go to the continuum limit and think of surfaces, what is so special about this connection? I am going to explain what do you mean this connection omega? What do you mean yeah, connection? Yeah, yeah. You will see what is it just in the next year. Uh, 
uh, if you will now analyze naive continuum limit of, of that, you will see that this omega now is written as s uh, are around uh, of operator which is 2D Dirac operator. And where these phi bands and so they are defined by induced, they are induced phi bands, they are defined by, from induced metric. <coughs> these omegas are simply you have what the situation intuition is you should understand it. You have a flat surface. You can imagine all this picture on a flat case. And then you rotate at each point, at each point by his own in his own way. You will get curved surface. These rotations, as you two uh, in 3D, 3D rotations, they code it, they are coded in this matrix omega or s. And they rotate direct action from left and right by S, S plus. And you will get some action, which is uh, that. But, so that, then it, it looks like it's the most natural action. There is like nothing special, but it's just. Yes, indeed. Uh, the point is, uh, what, what, what is written most natural in a way, well, <laughs> uh, but it's most natural action, but nobody up to. Uh, 85 didn't uh, define it. We have defined this type of action in this work in the 85. Just because I understood that uh, if you consider this limit continuity, you get something is necessary to formulate it as a some way, and then you see what is that. Can, can I ask a question? So I understand that the relation of discretized model is very subtle, but suppose that somebody asks you write an action for fermions. Living on the surface. What I'm saying that that discretized model. Would you write something different? No, 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 no. It is, it is precise. This expression is precise, precise, precise precisely corresponding to this discretized action. Yes. If anywhere, if you will, fermions uh, represent at, at the point. You can okay. Let me if you tell a few words about that. If you consider to consider two neighbors, the correct way to to make this continuum limit is following. No, but all right, all right, let me ask my question. Suppose that we forget about this relation to leading world. Just let's just ask a general question. Yeah. We are interested in putting fermions on a continuum surface in some yeah. way. Yes. Here you give us one way to do this on this page. Are there any other interesting ways to do this? Uh, okay. Is like the most, uh, the, or is this the only basically? Well, okay, I will come to that point. I'm telling you, okay, right, good question in the following sense. This prescription is in his basis, I was going to come to that, in his basis has structure, following structure. Uh, Probably there are people here who is familiar with integrable model or algebraic beta, and that's how it's formulated. You're starting from so-called R matrix, which is evolution operator of the states in two points. And then you have a product of R matrices. It's defined, defined uh, so-called transfer matrix. And then you take a product of transfer matrices and take trace over all directions. We'll get partition function of this corresponding model. So all models in principle, integrable or not, they can be described in the, 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 that way if you have a nearest neighbor interactions. So now the question is if you will try to make action to write on that, on that object, you will come to this structure with these arrows and so on. It's no way. This is the most natural way to define it there. Uh, it is not a question of, well, uh, if I understand your question correctly, it's a point of following. It's, there is no here the point that you have some fermionic action discretized and then saying, well, okay, so what should be continuum limit? Let's jump directly to continuum limit. No, you start with these arrows, make a simply transformation, and let me sell you simple, trivial, this type of transformation. You present psi x plus psi plus something uh, delta psi equal to exponent uh, trans translation from the delta psi in some direction del e, e alpha alpha psi at the point psi 
You make this type of transformations, expand it at the unit, uh, making naive continuity, expand this exponent in uh, around the one. Then uh, believe me that from that discretized action, you will directly come to this action. But I, I will not answer my question. Just let's look at this section. What is special about it? Apart what do you mean, what is special? I don't understand what. Special is nothing. <laughs> special is that that. Well, if you have a continuum action, there is some interesting symmetry, whatever you know. Ah, uh, symmetry. I can. Uh, I will, I'm going to analyze it. But uh, symmetry. Would you have guessed the section without any relation to the easing model? In principle, after all, yes, because the question is following. Uh, first of all, there are rotations in 3D. So if you're writing something, you will have a, this rotation in the action. Then you three D fermions because they should be rotated in three D. That's crucial. That's different from the before the sign factor before this, this part. There were two D fermions. In Nebuchadnezzar string side, they are two dimensional fermions, and they, they, their additional component like space, it is a number of this type of fermions. They are not transforming according to the fermions in that way. Uh, here, the fermions are two three-dimensional fermions, and then uh, clearly some direct action will appear if you would like to understand what is going. But what to write with three-dimensional fermions living in two-dimensional surface? What to write? But I'm coming to this point. You have three, three. You would like to put three-dimensional fermions onto two D surface. How to do it? And having in mind, it should be something like Dirac. What to do that? With Dirac, you mean you have a, some kind of Pauli matrices, but now it is curved. It is curved now, so you like induced metric, you can define induced Pauli matrices. It, it, it is the way how I will define this action in that form. You define, uh, you take the tangent vector d alpha x, multiply by its Pauli matrices in 3D, which are the gamma matrices in three dimensional space, right? For three dimensional fermions. So you define it like a gamma curved Dirac matrix for 2D surface. And with that, you're writing, look what, look what is written here. It's trivial things. This gamma matrix is differential acting on right, and this gamma matrix is differential acting on left. This is the way how to write the Dirac theory interacting with gravity. You write acting right and left, nearby you're writing tetrads, and you are getting the direct action with gravity. Here, instead of tetrads, you have this object. That's it. And that you see, in some sense, indeed, you can, from the previous picture, you can guess what kind of theory should be, and that was like that. So it's a very natural way, indeed, this induced direct action, is a very natural description of what is happening on the surface. With three-dimensional fermions, you should put on two-dimensional surface, and they should somehow react how the rotating, when you rotate the curved surface, you rotate it at each point. And this, this S matrix is appearing there as a rotation. And inside, inside the worksheet, it's a 2D direct action. You see here? It is 2D direct action, but rotated from left and side. And then you can write simply in this way also. Thanks, it's much more clear now. Okay, good. So hopefully, yes, I'm not, oh my God, I'm even not even, okay, I should jump now. Okay, so uh, with this action, one now say that, let's now in continuum try to, what was the sign factor on discrete as well? If you calculate, I said, calculate fermionic action, you will, on the space, you will get uh, just precisely sine factor which I have defined. But now let's consider if we in continuum we will calculate this functional integral over fermions and uh, that find the determinant. It should be corresponding to the say, continuum limit of this sine factor somehow, right? And this determinant can be calculated, and that also was done in the article mentioned above, and this defining by by uh, so-called some it's integral of the Vesumino with the type, which means you have your surface, sigma, you have the surface M, 
you extend it by kind of what I'm telling it's uh, it's for oriented surfaces for non oriented I don't know how to do that that's what I'm telling about in Ising model we have this M can be oriented and non oriented all they can be all or they should be all actually but this answer is good for uh, oriented one uh, and then this determinant can be calculated but you do technique more or less developed in the middle of 80s how people were calculating determinants and then it's coming to the, so this integral of a zominata but integrant is a it's from Hopf invariant this type of object is from Hopf invariant uh, and you but you integrate it with, on the, with the cap on three this boundary boundary with epsilon sigma which, which boundary is m and you will integrate over that that's somehow contained inside all this description and continuum limit so that's about sine factor now i will jump into its most of the next second important part of my top to whole effect and see to show you that indeed what will happen here <laughs> it is the same model but with instead of this rotation surface rotation some simple u1 random gauge field so uh, let me briefly tell you what is uh, for audience maybe it's not familiar what is whole effect quantum mobile effect what are the plateau transitions so imagine you have you have a plane you have perpendicular magnetic field and when uh, you apply the electric field you will have a current in a perpendicular direction direction it's a whole current it's uh, uh, perpendicular whole effect, right? And then you can easily classically calculate it. You will see this whole conductivity is the inverse proportional to magnetic field. But then made the experiment from Glitzik in the sometime in the beginning of 80s and found that instead of this is experimental result, but I will this, this picture will explain more uh, essential part. Uh, if you draw here a picture of uh, whole conductivity and uh, longitudinal ohmic conductivity versus magnetic field, you will see that uh, this line, inverse magnetic field here should be, uh, you will see that it's not uh, linear anymore, but it's quantized. This blue is quantized, sigma x, y, and the ohmic longitudinal conductivity, they are uh, on the plateaus, the system is an insulator. The system cannot product a current. But on the transition between plateaus, it's becoming uh, uh, delocalized and current can appear. So it, 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 on the transition, there's some kind of second order phase transition is happening. And the question to describe it, how to formulate this transition and calculate the thing is what theory it is. Where is the transition? Is it at a particular point? This is, a says, particular points, according, it depends on the density of particles there and the particles and so on. But at the transition, we have to see some singularities, but the way you drew, there is no singularity. Which kind of singularity? Well, you know, you know something. This is experimental picture. This is inverse magnetic field. Or actually, it is, or, or in the practice, it's not a sigma, but it's a resistivity is calculating along a magnetic field, but the same picture is working here. I'm worried that at the second transition, second transition, some things should blow up <coughs> into infinity, but you have... It is infinity. It is. You see jump, it's infinity. Here you can see these jumps are infinity. What is infinity? This, this jumps, it's the conductivity you see, or the ordinary ohmic conductivity is zero on the plateaus. Nothing can be conducted. Conductivity is zero. You apply field, you get zero multiply on field, you get zero current. On the plateau and transition, you see that there is a jump for uh, uh, conductivity or current appearing. But it's not an infinite jump. Well, it is. Okay, let's. Uh, uh, well, it's a separate question. It's, uh, it's not important for me. Let's continue. It's a very technical question connecting with the uh, whole effect itself. It's not crucial here for now. So, uh, uh, how to explain, can be explained, this model? How can it be explained? The, the more or less picture was described in Chalker and, by Chalker and Goddington. I will have a reference later, next pages. And uh, the, what is happening physically here, one can understand in the following way. So, imagine you have a regular, uh, you have a, some potential field. 
Uh, and then you have some amount of free electrons which are filling this landscape, this po potential. So they are forming, they are forming kind of lakes, some kind of puddles of Fermi uh, regions. Okay. Uh, then inside, if you apply now magnetic field up, up then your electrons here, they can't, they, what they, they are doing? They may, they're making rotation around with the radius more or less, uh, with the radius inverse proportional to B. And they're all localized inside. So electrons somewhere in the middle, it cannot conduct any current. It is localized. But electrons on the boundary, Fermi electrons on the boundary, they make, can make a following precision. They rotate, then reflect from the boundary potential, rotate again, and you see they can move along the boundary in particular direction. Uh, it depends on direction of magnetic field, they, get, they can rotate around that. Uh, but again, still they are all localized because they, they cannot go away from particular lake. But what happening? Close to saddle point of potential, the, this electron around this boundary can tunnel from one point to neighbor lake. And this tunneling will allow him to tunnel to neighbor lake and then so on. And then the nether, next tunneling, the next uh, lake. And then so he can't go from one end of the sample to another red conducting current. And how can describe this process, uh, tunneling process? You can describe it by, uh, by you can't uh, tunneling and rotating amplitude R and T. You should put the condition R square plus T square equal to one and describe this process via some kind of S matrix or transfer to transfer matrix. And then you will have a following model which was formulated with flat distribution of the saddle points. The saddle points are crucial here because scattering happening on saddle points. So you put regular saddle points are these crosses here. You put uh, those uh, picture. Everywhere you write from up to down, you can define uh, following transfer matrix, which maps the state on the left to the right. This is the matrix one. This is scattering, uh, the describing the scattering process as a transfer matrix. And the next one, ne oh, sorry. And the next line you see is slightly different because they, they, they are shifted. The, this line, the saddle points are shifted compared to that. Shift, shifted in one units. And then you will have a, another M2 matrix, which is uh, this like this. It's just simply shift of, uh, simple shift of numeration of the matrix element. And then you will write product M1, U1, M2, U2, where U2, U are the random phases. They are simply random U1 phases. Uh, Chalker and Gottingdon were thinking that once the potential is random, originally picture I drawn, the, yes, ah, okay. <laughs> I'm in the middle, okay. <laughs> okay, but this part is most important, okay. Also one of import. The, they were thinking the potential is random. Potential is random when in potential particle moving from one saddle point to another saddle point is accumulating uh, some bomb around a phase. And since randomness means, they, according to their idea, that the randomness of this potential is equivalent to randomness of these accumulated phases, which is this one. And then you put this, uh, accumulated phase like you can put as a diagonal U matrix with random phases, which it associated with random bomb of phases. And that, this picture will describe the physics here. But the saddle points are regularly disposed. That's a crucial point. Uh, then you calculate so-called Lyapunov exponent. You can calculate TT Dodger. This, in, in, in this calculation can be made numerically. There's a well-developed technique for that. And then you calculate so-called Lyapunov exponent gamma. And you will get that occurred around some critical point. It should be plus, sorry. It should be plus in the second time. It should be plus here. And according to critical point, gamma is coming to zero with some index nu. This index nu is a nothing but uh, 
experimental value which people are measuring uh, here I tell here according to this question is not exponent they are wide they have a wide and this wideness how it's behaving according to temperature this behavior the k depend connected with that Lapin of exponent you know, we have this formula people actually in experiment measuring this k and putting z is coherent less it's one or two depending of set of what you have and then you come to new and then you can't compare with Lapin of exponent and then this comparison gives the following result that uh, numerical calculation shows those are the last one this is my article and then there are several other groups are the first calculation were been made by Slavin and Otsuki in uh, 2009 and then 2011 we did and then these groups of people also made here are the numbers numerical simulation give for new 2.6 but experimental lightest latest experimental value made in sui group with 2009 is giving 2.38 so it's very far so this model cannot describe the plateau transition what to do what what is the problem uh, the regular disposition of saddle points that was a hypothesis which is not good in practice when you consider any potential landscape is much harder you will see here i denoted uh, some saddle points of minimums that are in blue maximums in yellow and there are saddle points in between and the disposition of saddle points where this tunneling happening it's not regular now let's it's random if you make it with random uh, then you will have here for example the, from here i draw the disposition of saddle points. These yellows are saddle points. Yellow points are saddle points. Uh, and this, this is the similar picture. The re network is becoming random. It's not regular anymore. And this is a sign that some kind of gravity will appear here. So if you will now generate together with the, the randomness of phase, you want phases, not only randomness which present in this model. One should generate also random saddle points. And then probably situation will be improved. And indeed, we have formulated, okay, this is another picture of why, how in this potential field, string, no word string may appear. And the way for condensed matter physicists, don't, don't just care. Okay. Uh, if you consider these are a disposition of saddle points plus minus, and then you will, based on the uh, neighbor connection that plus and minus between, you will get a quadrangulated uh, object which is a surface consisting from quadrangles, a random surface consisting from quadrangles. And different disposition of saddle points equivalent to different uh, disposition of this, this type of surfaces. So averaging over uh, potentials equivalent of some summation of different of this type induced surfaces. So in order to make, a, to generate, to calculate in a way, we made a following uh, procedure. We, re we randomly start to replace scattering node with the, this is a tunneling point with the, another one, which is uh, not tunneling, passing through with amplitude t equal to zero, r equal to one, or t equal to one, r equal to zero. Then this scattering node will become like this or this. Uh, and then uh, it's equivalent to the situation when you have a lake and pushing, for example, here, but consider this point, and push down this saddle point down to the lake. You will get this picture. This, this, de this decomposition, like a surgery, means this operation. So if you now take this regular disposition of saddle points, this crosses, and according to scattering uh, transfer matrices, you will randomly also replace this transfer matrix, this according to this procedure, these two with some probability P. So you will get another model which generating a uh, random surface. It is the way. It is random Manhattan lattice, by the way. Uh, why it's connected with the previous discussion with Simon? It is precisely the same type of random Manhattan lattice. And instead of this scattering nodes here, particular should be set another uh, 
another uh, model. So if you will take now this transfer matrix, replace also instead of this, which is originally was set, this is transfer matrix, two by two blocks, randomly this, replace them with the scattering with equal, equal to where R equal to one, T zero or vice versa. Then you will get a random network. And then uh, the numerical value give, we've calculated is to 237, you see. Perfectly matching the experimental loss. So in that original model, random, this, this network was not taken into account. It's different randomness. It's different symmetry group. The group of gravity appearing, but you can randomly uh, replace, change the coordinates of the your points, consider random. Uh, potential that uh, will produce another critical index. Yes, sir, please. So, I mean, how do you turn off the electron electron repulsion in the experiment? This is a beautiful theory for money. I will answer just a second. Yeah, the experiment yeah. sees part of Exactly, there are interactions. This is a plateau, a theory. Yes, it's a very good question. It's at all time telling, it's just uh, the following that. Uh, this model, it's a. Uh, Fuzzy classical model. Originally, you have a two-dimensional electrons in two, uh, two plus one. You have the two plus one dimensional space, two-dimensional space of one uh, time direction, right? But feeling Fermi lakes, electrons starting quasi classical move around large magnet, and the system from two-dimensional becoming uh, one-dimensional less. If you, uh, interaction of electrons making this picture of paths in the potential, particular. If you take uh, interaction, count this interaction, you will indeed get the same picture. But the size of these uh, objects, this is a well-developed theory based on interaction due to uh, 1970s, the beginning of 70s, but made by Efros and Shklovsky in connection with uh, semiconductors, how the paddles are forming. This is the precise, the same theory you can approach, they attach to them. Uh, I can tell you details on that, uh, how to test it also at separate quality. Okay, uh, the last one, if you formulate the same model, the same model, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, they say the same model, formulate the same model, but for spin particles, then instead of U1 phase, you will should write a row this rotation. This was made in this article, but but with particle, uh, and then you will get the spin quantum hole, and then this action maybe what is going. Maybe you can. Yes, I'm just stopping here. Uh, that's the last word, and then we you will get the the same action as for CDIzing model sine factor. There only in there, there is a restriction that when you're putting this SU2 groups going around the circle, these SU2 groups come to come to have to come to the center. That's the only restriction. Uh, therefore, uh, it is uh, should be evaluated. So, okay, uh, I just simply I will stop here and only say that uh, all this numerical result, but one can formulate a matrix model which produce this type of situation. You, it allows you to put any random air matrix on random fluctuating surface and construct the strings here. This is the way. Like uh, instead of standard M square, you put in between our matrix, and then this partition function over random matrices will reproduce, reproduce, uh, reproduce a partition function of this type of models. This are uh, work on the way, and that's uh, there are some results, but no time to describe it. Thank you very much. of time, maybe there's time for one or two short questions. So, yeah. <laughs> so this fermionic string representation of the 3D easing, did it ever produce a result or is it just a, a beautiful? Well, what is, uh, okay, first, what I demonstrate it's an exact result. Now, today I was telling you some only results which are exact. I have calculation on that basis indexes in 3D easing model. But there are some hypotheses there which needs to be checked. And I pass to this whole effect problem in order to gain any intuition what is going on there. 
Therefore, I didn't talk today about that. I have article in the beginning of 90s, but there are points there should be checked. Therefore, uh, so uh, that's the status. I'm, I will go back after some time understanding how to matrix model to calculate. There is possible to calculate. Very nice mathematics is there, by the way. Uh, so I can't, I would like to finish that for me, Ising model is a, some tool which producing ideas and the solution itself is uh, important, but the other one is the, as much important as its solution of 3 model. Thank you. Yeah.